Anaphylaxis is a rapid, severe allergic reaction. Anaphylaxis occurs when the body overreacts to an allergen to which the person has been previously exposed. A child may have a severe allergy to medications, insect stings and bites, food or even latex. Children that have been diagnosed with allergies requiring immediate intervention should have an individualized health care plan that directs their care provider on the correct steps to take in case of an exposure. If you witness signs and symptoms of a severe allergic reaction in a child with no care plan, call 911. Current state law allows children to self-carry their own emergency epinephrine in an auto-injector with the approval of the child's parent, health care provider, and the school nurse. Even though these children will be responsible for carrying their own epinephrine, it is important for staff to know that these children have a life-threatening allergy. These children will most likely need assistance in administering this life-saving medication. Further, it is strongly suggested that the family provide an extra epinephrine auto-injector in case the epinephrine carried by the child is not readily available. Children with allergies may have mild symptoms which may include a runny nose, a few hives that look like red raised bumps, and itching. Antihistamines are useful in the treatment of minor symptoms. The most common antihistamine used for these symptoms is Benadryl. Antihistamines are taken orally and may be in the form of a tablet, liquid, or quick dissolved strip. Other times the symptoms are severe and quick and emergency action must be taken. Some of the symptoms include hives, red raised bumps spreading over the body, wheezing and difficulty swallowing or breathing, swelling of the lips, face, tongue, throat, hands, or feet, nausea and vomiting, signs of shock, and even loss of consciousness. If these symptoms are present, epinephrine must be administered immediately. An individualized care plan must be in place to direct staff on the immediate care required for children having an allergic reaction. The care plan is your authorization from the health care provider and the parent to put the plan into action and deliver the medications needed. The epinephrine may be in the form of an EpiPen, a pre-filled auto-injector. If an EpiPen is used, 911 must be called. After an EpiPen injection, the child should lie down and stay down until help arrives. To administer the injection, firmly grasp the EpiPen. Do not place your thumb on the end of the pen. Pull off the gray safety release. Jab the black tip firmly into the outer thigh so it clicks and hold on the thigh approximately 10 seconds. The pen automatically injects epinephrine. In an emergency, it can even be used through jeans or slacks. Note that the needle is visible when pulled from the leg. Return the used EpiPen to its holder using the one-handed technique and then give it to the paramedics when they arrive. The severe symptoms usually improve quickly after the EpiPen is administered. Refer to the child's individualized care plan for instructions on administering a second dose of epinephrine if ordered and available. Remember, if you have administered epinephrine, you must call 911. Remember to document the medications given on a medication log. EpiPens must be stored at room temperature and never exposed to extreme heat or direct sunlight. Check the expiration dates for all medications needed for severe allergies and give families ample time to replace the medications as the expiration date draws near. If your school or program takes field trips, plan ahead to ensure that the medications and care plan accompany the child with a severe allergy and that a medication trained and delegated person is on the trip. Asthma is a chronic lung condition characterized by ongoing inflammation of the airways or bronchial tubes. Asthma is the most common childhood chronic disease and is a leading cause of missed school days. Asthma symptoms can range from mild to severe and can vary from episode to episode. Asthma can be brought on by many triggers such as exercise, colds and illness, allergies, weather changes, irritants including pollution, and emotional changes. It is important to be aware of the triggers for each individual child identified with asthma and whenever possible, avoid these triggers. It is important that the following asthma symptoms be treated according to the child's individualized health care plan. Continual coughing, shortness of breath, rapid and difficult breathing, tightness in the chest and wheezing. 
The care plan is your authorization from the child's health care provider and parent to treat the symptoms you are observing. Current state law allows children to self-carry their own inhaled asthma medications with the approval of the child's parent, health care provider, and the school nurse. Even though these children will be responsible for administering their own inhaled medication, it is important for staff to know that these children have asthma and are carrying their own medication. Further, it is recommended that an extra inhaler be kept at school in case the staff needs to administer the medication to the child. While there is no cure for asthma and children do not outgrow asthma, this chronic disease is controllable with effective use of asthma medications. Here are some commonly used medications and treatments for those with asthma. Bronchodilators are used for quick relief. This medication is a short-acting medication and acts quickly to open constricted airways and relaxing smooth bronchial muscles. Improvement is usually seen within 5 to 10 minutes. Inhaled steroids are used to reduce inflammation and may be taken daily to control or prevent persistent asthma symptoms. Long-acting bronchodilators relax muscles that tighten around airways and helps the inhaled steroids work more effectively. These medications do not provide quick relief. The medication most often given in school and child care is the short-acting bronchodilator, albuterol. This medication is delivered by a metered dose inhaler. This device delivers medication in a fine mist to the lungs. Correct use of inhalers is important and may be a problem for many children. They often find it hard to coordinate the quick puff from the inhaler and breathing the medication deep into their lungs. For this reason, many children use their inhaler with what is called a spacer or holding chamber. To use the inhaler with a spacer, remove the cap from the canister and shake it well. The new HFA inhalers may require priming. If this particular inhaler has not been used for two weeks, pump three to four times into the air away from your face. Priming instructions for various inhalers may differ. Check packaging instructions or contact your school nurse or child care nurse consultant for specific instructions. Put the spacer on the mouthpiece of the inhaler. Have the child stand or sit up straight and breathe out completely. With the mouth around the spacer, press the canister and instruct the child to breathe in deeply and evenly. This should take about 3 to 5 seconds. If possible, hold breath for 10 seconds and then breathe out gently. To ensure that all the medication was inhaled, have the child take a second breath through the spacer. Have the child wait at least a minute before taking the second puff if one is ordered. If using inhaled steroids, the child should rinse mouth with water after use. Some health care providers prefer that a child use an inhaler without a spacer. Follow the instructions from the health care provider on administration technique. A nebulizer is another way to deliver inhaled medications and may be prescribed for some children who have asthma or are recovering from a respiratory illness. Again, the quick relief short-acting bronchodilator, albuterol, is the medication most commonly used with a nebulizer. To use the nebulizer, begin with clean hands, pour the medication into the cup. It may have to be measured and mixed with saline or it may come pre-measured and ready to use. Connect one end of the tubing to the compressor and the other end to the bottom of the nebulizer cup. Turn on the compressor and check that mist is coming out of the mouthpiece. Depending on the type of nebulizer, the child may use a mask or a mouthpiece. Stay with the child ensuring that all the medication is delivered. This usually takes about 5 to 15 minutes. After each use, rinse the mouthpiece and nebulizer cup with tap water and allow them to air dry. All inhaled medications given to children must be documented on a medication log. Children with asthma take inhaled medication on a prescribed schedule to control their symptoms, but they may also need to have immediate access to their medications. Instructions for when to use these medications should be provided in an individualized care plan. School or center-based child care programs should consult the school nurse or child care health consultant if there are any questions concerning the care of children with asthma. For the Colorado Department of Public Health and Environment, the Maternal and Child Health Bureau, the Colorado Department of Education, and Qualistar Early Learning, I'm Anita Lopez. Thank you for watching.